So please uh, welcome with me Jim Totland from Norway. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Jim Totland. I come from Norway. I'm 20 years old. And my project is titled Air Resistance, a study of the drag force on spherical objects. So why write about air resistance? Well, if you've had any physics classes, you probably noticed that in a lot of problems, you're asked to ignore the effects of air resistance because it complicates the problem too much. And this is what inspired me to look more into how it actually affects the movements of things. So my objectives for my project were to first find an accurate model for uh, describing uh, air resistance when you have typical sized objects like a uh, football or a baseball or something like that. And then use that theoretical model to simulate a throw in two dimensions. So my experiment was very easy I just or simple. I just dropped a light styrofoam ball straight down to the floor and filmed it. And then I analyzed that film in a computer program. Uh, and here on the screen, you can see the graph for the experimental speed of the light styrofoam ball that I dropped. Uh, it's this dotted line. Uh, the red line is the speed of uh, an object falling with no air resistance at all. So you, get, you can see that the speed is just decreasing down to infinity. Uh, and the green dashed line is just is the theoretical model for the speed when you have quadratic air resistance, uh, which means that the air resistance on the ball is proportional to the square of the speed at which the ball is falling. Uh, so you can see that the theoretical model and the and the experimental results correlate very nicely. So that gave me confidence that the uh, drag force is actually not linear, but quadratic. And it also gave me confidence to use this theoretical model to look at projectile motion and write uh, and uh, simulate a movement in two dimensions with quadratic drag. And in two dimensions, it, the equations for movement become way too complicated to solve uh, analytically, analytically. So you have to use a numerical method. Uh, and the me method I used was uh, Newton's method. And I wrote a script in the programming language Python to simulate this throw. Uh, and what I wanted to do then was to find the optimal launching angle when you have quadratic air resistance present. So when you have no air resistance at all, the optimal launching angle is 45 degrees, which is pretty intuitive. Uh, while when you have, uh, whilst when you have uh, quadratic drag, I found that the optimal launching angle is not a fixed value, but it depends on the initial conditions of the uh, system. So for example, if you have a ball which weighs uh, two kilos and has an initial speed of 10 meters per second, it's going to have a completely different optimal launching angle for maximum range than a ball with other initial conditions. So to summarize, uh, I found that for typical sized objects like a football or something like that, uh, the air resistance which acts on it is proportional to the square of the speed at which it's traveling, which means you have quadratic drag. Uh, and I also found that the optimal launching angle for a projectile is uh, dependent on the initial conditions when you have quadratic air resistance. What did I learn from the project? I learned that simple problems can often be more complicated than what they seem. When I just started, when I started with this project, I thought I'd be looking at a linear relationship between speed and drag force, but it turned out to be a lot more complicated than that, and I had to read a lot of academic literature to get to the bottom of the theoretical model. And I also learned how useful programming can be for uh, for solving physical problems. Thank you. Okay, do we have any questions? Yes, over there. Uh, so, uh, 
Do you recall how many times you um, dropped a ball in your graph? Do you uh, that graph is just the, uh, an excerpt from one experiment. It's, ah, it's just uh, one experiment. Okay, yeah. That's it, I guess. Thank you. Any more questions? Somewhere? Over there? And here, then after, Frederick? Have you tried to find any mathematical formula for um, uh, finding the optimal angle? Uh, yeah, that's impossible analytically, so you can't do that. So you have to use a, an approximation and a numerical method. Do we know what these initial conditions it depends on are, uh, the optimal angle, that is? Uh, for example, the mass of the ball or the initial speed of the ball uh, are examples of the initial conditions that uh, decide what the optimal launching angle is. Does the, does the um, cross-sectional area make any difference there as well? Yeah, yeah, the size of the sphere compared to its mat mass does also make a difference, yeah. All right, thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, we're in the front. Why do you want to study this? Uh, physics, said, why? Physics, just What physics? is your drive power, or what this, is your will? This effect, or just physics generally? What is your will power, I mean? <laughs> uh, I just think it's interesting to learn more about how things work and function in the universe and in the everyday life. How long have you studied before you can do this? Uh, this was a high school project, uh, which I did in my senior year of high school. Okay, so how many years is senior years? Uh, in Norway, we have three years in high school. Uh, so, three years. Wonderful, good luck. Thank you. Very nice. Okay. Thank you.